Nelson Dellis. Oh, man. The pressure. The pressure. I'm rusty. Nelson, because of you, I learned how to memorize the deck of cards. But I want you kind of to show off and flex on my audience right now, okay? Because okay? right. they're a bunch of magicians. Yeah. They, they love magic. Me memorizing a deck in 10 minutes, it's okay. But to right. be able to do what you do might actually be practical. What we got here, what's this thing? This is just a timer, stack timer that I use to like measure my time. I stop it when I'm done. Do you have to hit it with both hands? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Would it be easier just to have a timer that just you can stop with one hand? Yeah, I think because it comes from the stack cup stacking world where I guess you have to have both hands oh. to indicate that you're starting and finishing. Oh, interesting. Just cards, it doesn't matter. Okay. Some people, you know, they start with like their deck here and just like. All right, sir. So your record time again is? 29 seconds um, in privacy of my home. But uh, with you guys, I'm probably gonna take about a minute or so just to make sure I nail it rather than for speed, yeah. A minute would be great whenever you're ready. One minute, was that 19 seconds? Yeah. He's just kind of going over it in his mind, I guess. That's crazy. It looks painful. It does look painful. Now, for those of you at home wondering, he's deep in his mind palace. He's wandering the rooms. Okay. He's back, he's back. And I'm back, wow. <laughs> so minute 20, before you, before you go into it, yeah. you, you like double back. You yeah. went through it and then you went through it. Is that something you always do? I do that when I'm performing. Okay, so at home you would trust yourself more. You would allow yourself to make yeah. mistakes. I don't do that in competition. I try to just go through it once to be the fastest. The way you reconstruct the deck, you get another deck in yeah. factory order. In the right? Uh, right. Yeah, ace to king, whatever. And you got to put it in and that so you order. Put it, so which is helpful because you have the ones that maybe you miss some or you have gaps. You can see which what's left. I see. Whereas here, I'm going to recite to you and then I have to mentally. It's a lot easier to do in competition. It's a little easier. More forgiving if you have gap. More pressure too. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's see. Okay. All right, so Jack of Hearts, uh, six of clubs, 10 of diamonds, nine of spades, three of hearts. I didn't even look at the last one, um, but let me figure it out. Hold on. It's not a joker. Thank you. Oh, is it ace of hearts? Bam, minute 20, baby. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yo, that's nice. crazy. The mind palace that you put that into, we're gonna check back with you in like a few months from now. I'm just gonna FaceTime and be like, hey, let's go, <laughs> name okay, him. Perfect. So you can't be in front of your computer. Because you're doing that to me, now I can't use that memory palace. Exactly, I'm locking it in. <laughs> I'm taking your memory palace from you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. All right guys, today we are fortunate enough to have a sponsor for this video, so thank you to the folks over at Skillshare. And if you don't know this by now, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes. And having a premium membership to Skillshare gives you unlimited access to their website. Whether you just wanna fuel your passion or curiosity or your career even further, Skillshare is a perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. So for instance, if you're very interested in learning how we do these super cool cinematic sequences and intros to some of our videos, you can follow some Skillshare courses that'll help you get that and learn basically the cinematography basics. There is a course by Zach Mulligan where he teaches just that. You can learn everything from A to Z, putting together a shot list, how to create better shots, and how to just be a better cinematographer. And also if you compare it to in-class workshop and lessons, it's a lot cheaper. It comes out to less than $10 a month if you subscribe annually. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video. There's a link in the description where you can click that and it'll automatically get you two months free trial to Skillshare. So if ever you were looking for a way to expedite your learning process, whether that be in the creative world, in social media marketing, or in animation, or in uh, design, if you wanna design your own playing cards, whatever it may be, Skillshare's got a course for you. So link in the description, click that, and you get two months free. Thanks, Skillshare. Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome back. This to my left over here is Nelson Dallas. What's up, guys? Nelson is a four-time USA memory champion. He is a memory monster. He is a <laughs> mnemonic beast. A beast of of massive proportions. I can't even. I can't even. Words can't even describe how good this guy is at memorizing stuff. I featured him on a few videos. If you guys haven't checked those out, I strongly 
suggest you check them out before learning how to memorize a deck of cards today. You're gonna wanna check those out, how to create a mind palace, and also how to use the major system, which is turning numbers into letters and turning those letters into images. Before we go on as well, if you guys are really interested in learning this stuff uh, and exploring the full potential of your memory, A, check out Nelson's channel. I've linked it below. He covers a lot of in-depth memorizing, how to memorize Morse code, all sorts of really cool stuff. And also, he's got a book out. It's called Remember It and it's just got chock full of memory tips. So anything you wanna remember at all that you ever need to, whether you want to probably compete or whether you want to just have a better memory to learn stuff, anybody can do this. And I'm living proof of this. I started my memory journey about 12 days ago and I can memorize an entire deck of cards, front to back, back to front in like six minutes. It's awesome. It's nuts. Yeah. It's absolutely, I didn't think it was possible I thought you had to be like gifted or like autistic or something no. <laughs> like be able to like remember stuff but apparently no it's it's tricks it's a trainable skill yeah it's just something you practice and it's not that hard and it's not daunting so if i can do it guys you guys can do it a hundred percent yeah today what we're going to teach you if you've already followed along with the other videos we're going to teach you how to memorize an entire deck starting with the face cards. Baby steps, grab a deck of cards and grab every face card, so it's 12 cards, and separate them into suits. We got hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. We're gonna run through sort of how to memorize these using a system called the PAO system. It stands for person, action, object. And in a quick nutshell, what does that mean? Basically, we're grouping these cards into smaller sections so that the whole deck seems more palatable and we're turning them into really super memorable images or scenes. Awesome, all right, so let's get started here. All right, so uh, let's first start with what each of these suits would represent. So we'll, the best way to kind of approach it is to think in categories. The best is to go as intuitive as possible, right? You don't wanna to have to memorize extra if you don't have to. So hearts, I always suggest that you make it your family or close friends, because hearts, you love them, right? Diamonds could be celebrities, uh, whoever comes to mind when you think of money or fame or something like that. Spades could be friends or kind of wild card category. Maybe you love Star Wars, maybe you love magicians. Maybe those could be that category. I, I use them as uh, fictitious characters. Okay. So, you know, anything from yeah. cartoon characters to horror villains to superheroes. Yeah. And then clubs, another suggestion could be sports or athletes, because they use clubs for some of those sports. Again, it doesn't matter what you choose, just as long as you decide on it. And you have enough in that category, enough memorable people or faces, that you can attribute to 13 different images. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, don't make it like, oh, the cast of Friends, because you'll be missing like four people or yeah. something, you know what I mean? Wide-sized pool to pull from. So for me, these uh, started off as sports figures, and I didn't have enough, so I quickly translated them into magicians, because okay. <laughs> I know way too many magicians, you know, than, uh, than I need to. So next, what we're gonna do is, once you have all these people, you're gonna come up with an action and an object for each one of those persons. And this should be also very intuitive. So. Whenever you think of, who's your king of hearts? Uh, my dad. It's his dad. So, or if it's your dad or whatever, think of the most, the, the first thing that comes to mind as an action that your dad does. What does he do? My dad, he What's loves he to ride his motorcycle. So you picture that, that's his action, riding a motorcycle, right? Yep. And then you think of an object. So in that case, it almost rode itself. Super easy, it's yeah. gonna be the motorcycle. The motorcycle, right? So the king of hearts is his dad riding a motorcycle. That's the person, the action, and the object, okay? Then you do that for all the cards, right? So let's do an example here. Yeah. So we have the King of Hearts, which is going to be my dad, and uh, he's riding a motorcycle. Yeah. Um, now let's choose one of the diamonds here. Sure, what's Queen of Diamonds for you? For me, Queen of Diamonds is Oprah Winfrey uh, flying on a jetpack. Okay. So I remember this Dane <laughs> Cook skit. Dane Cook's a comedian. And he was like, and Oprah, she'd come in and she'd like, you know, whiz in on her jetpack and like spell <laughs> yeah, Oprah that. with like, do you remember that yeah, skit? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So for some reason that stuck in my head and I think that's, you know, the first thing I think about, so I went and, with and that. And that's a perfect example because most people might not think of that for Oprah, but for you, you did. And so that is what people should do is go with whatever you first think of. Right. Yeah. So Oprah, Oprah Winfrey flying a jetpack. Oh, jet okay. So let's put this here. So we got my dad riding a motorcycle, Oprah Winfrey flying on a jetpack, yep. and uh, let's take like a fictitious character here. Yeah, so what's the Jack of Spades for you? Jack of Spades is James Bond shooting a gun. 
Nice. So okay. J for James. That makes sense. Easy yeah. enough. James Bond is a fictitious character, and I think I always try to like link up the actions and objects to make sense to each other. It's like James Bond fishing with a spear. Like it'd be James Bond fishing with a fishing rod. You know, right, wouldn't right, right. wouldn't be too too much of a stretch. Yeah. James Bond shooting a gun. I see that. Da -na, da -na. The with the thing? The barrel, yeah. Yeah, is it a barrel or is it like just like I the aperture? It looks like kind of like an aperture thing. I thought it was supposed it's to be a, a, a gun barrel. A gun barrel. Lee said it's a barrel. <laughs> what does he know? These, we'll just concentrate on that for now. Yep. So this is what happens next. So everybody has a person action object. Now, what happens is when a deck is shuffled, um, you know, you're gonna see all these cards in order. You're gonna start from here and go to there. Um, you're gonna look at three cards at a time and every three groups of cards, you're gonna read them as the person doing the next card's action with the next card's object. So you're basically gonna get all these kind of weird combinations of all the PAOs that you mm -hmm. designed for all these cards. In this case, we have King of Hearts, which is our person. My dad. Your dad. Then we have Oprah, but it's in the action spot. So we use the action from her, which is? She's flying. She's flying. And then finally we have James Bond, but it's his object. It's in the object slot. So it's a what's, gun. So we have your dad flying on a gun. Right. That's exactly what I yeah. see. <laughs> so I see I see my dad kind of like kind of like he's like riding a motorcycle, but he's actually riding it through the air. And it's a it's a gun that's like projecting fire out of the back of it, right? So he's like <laughs> flying out of this like uncontrollable gun that just won't stop firing, you know? And I yeah, see yeah. my dad's beard in the wind. I'm seeing all these like crazy images. I smell the gunpowder. You know what I mean? Like these are these are just things that I'm trying to add on to that yeah. image to make it more. And memorable. that's super helpful because you're really adding color and memorableness to this picture when you add those little details. Yeah, I found I can remember a lot more, not just when I put those images together, but when I start thinking of little tiny details, uh, such as smells, mm -hmm. textures, uh, sounds, uh, even sometimes making the people, like deforming them, like their teeth falling out for no reason. Yeah. Like these are just really <laughs> abstract thoughts, or they're naked. You yep. know, probably not my dad. I'm probably not gonna, oh God. No. But you, that's one image. Those three cards is now this one unforgettable image. And if that's the first image in your series of cards, you're gonna put that at the first location of your mind palace. Right, so my mind palace would be this office, would be uh, in my parking spot outside. So my dad would be flying around the parking lot, the parking lot. on a gun. You know, and, and then that's it. First and then the idea is that you do that for the rest of the deck. When you're recalling the deck, you go to your mind palace, the first location, there's that bizarre picture of your dad flying around on the gun, and then you would translate it back to King of Hearts, Queen of Diamonds, and Jack of Spades. And that would actually be super easy to do. A lot of people think it's, it's gonna be difficult for them to think of that, but it's surprisingly really easy to recall the actions and objects associated to uh, the person or the card. Yeah. Uh, a lot easier than you would think. And then I would suggest, personally, this is how I did it, um, learning from Nelson's channel. I took all 12 cards, all 12 face cards, assigned a person, an action, an object to all of them, and uh, practiced those 12 over and over, shuffled them, you know, and then dealt them out and tried to remember them in, in the order that they were dealt out put them back together and then recite them. And uh, and that's helped me out. Once I did that, I moved on to the number cards. Yeah, so once you're comfortable with the idea of PAO, obviously you gotta give images, PAO, to all the rest of the cards, right? And so number cards is a little more challenging. They don't have faces on them. You gotta go by something other than what it looks like. And for this, they could refer to the other video that we did together describing the major system where you take a number and you turn it into a letter and you can use that to help kind of figure out who your characters are in those categories. Some of mine are pretty explicit, so I'm trying to like- <laughs> Choose the safe ones. Trying to take the PG ones, because uh, you know, a lot of times, as crazy as it seems, but raw, nudity, you know, sexually oriented images tend to stay in your Can't head them. a yeah. lot easier. Also violence, uh, you know, gore. gore. Yeah, yeah, a little gore. Uh, you know, this these type of things always sort of come up a lot easier. Um, so here, these are okay. my, my three cards that I choose. So let's say these three were the next order. Yeah. Uh, for me, this, this is a, a diamond. So it's like, for me, it's rich and famous people. Yeah. 
Uh, one being the letter T or the sound T or D. Yeah. I chose Taylor Swift. Nice. Singing into a microphone. This is That's how okay. I see Taylor Swift yep. singing to a microphone. Super easy, super simple. Uh, two, uh, which is the N sound in the major system. Um, and this is fictitious people, Spades, you know, yep. fictional characters. So it's Nemo okay. swimming in an aquarium. Perfect, yeah. Right? And then uh, hearts are friends and family. Uh, here I have uh, five and five is the L, right? In the major system. And so it's actually Lee, my camera guy. <laughs> and he's uh, and he's stretching on a carpet. Now this, okay. <laughs> so the, the video you're seeing here, right? Is straight from my camera roll. This is, uh, yeah, I'm showing it, Lee. Nice. This is me trying to edit, and this is what I gotta put up with. So Lee stretching on a carpet really resonates with me. <laughs> nice. So that's what I got here. So now we would have Taylor Swift. Yep. Swimming. Person, swimming, action. On a carpet. On a carpet. Or on in a carpet. carpet. Yeah. Or on a carpet, right? In my head now, I'm just imagining like an ocean made of carpets, right? And uh, Taylor Swift, she's got gills like a mermaid and she's <laughs> swimming through it, but she's getting rug burn as well at the same time. And, nice. and she's losing hair for some reason. It's just like, that's what I'm seeing, so. Got it, yeah. And, and one little technicality. So obviously there's ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So I'm, we consider the ace as equivalent to like one, right? So use the one to translate to the T or right. D sound. And then the 10, think of it like a zero. So it'll be the Z, Z. or S sound. I mean, some pointers that I kind of like figured out from, from you know, reading his stuff and listening to his videos. One is make sure your actions don't repeat. Yep, you want everything to be quite unique from each other so that obviously you don't confuse, you know, if you if you have two images of people flying, yep. uh, which one is it gonna be, which card is it? So make sure that flying is only for, you know, yep. Oprah. <laughs> yeah, um, the actions can look the same, or it can sound the same if you want, but as long as in your head, I guess you can differentiate the two, like yeah. distinctly. Um, any other tips you wanna give our audience? Yeah, and try to make your images meaningful. It's 52 images, so some people, it might you might fill them up for the most part, but there might be a few uh, stragglers of, of cards that you can't quite find a good fit for. For those, I would just suggest just choosing people that you want in your system. You know, if you love Game of Thrones, put Tyrion in there. Uh, if you, you know, have a new girlfriend who's on your mind all the time, put her in the cards, right? Um, because nothing is easier than memorize something that you care about. Yeah. Also, also make sure your actions and objects and people are, are super concrete. So yeah. an action like uh, talking, like talking is like, is one of those weird things. Like, what are you saying? Like, it's just gonna be too hard to imagine. So maybe it's my dad screaming, Wah! just like, and that's much more like vivid as an image than, right. you know, something yeah, a yeah. little bit. And also another point is, is these images are to stay, right? So every time you see that card, depending on its position, you're always gonna think of the same person. You're always gonna think of the same action. You're always gonna see, think of the same, uh, object. You know, you're just mixing it in different orders every time you memorize, but nothing changes. If you were gonna change them up every time, then it would be really hard to remember what image was what. So you want it to be consistent. All right, guys. So let me know your thoughts below about uh, learning all this memory stuff. I know this is new to this channel. This is, um, you know, Friday bonus videos. You never know what you're gonna get. And I'm super stoked with, uh, with this content because for me personally, it's just something that I'm experiencing and I wanna share with you guys. If you like it, let me know in the comments. And if you're already into this type of stuff, I wanna hear about it. And uh, here, let's do a little test. What are these three cards? Queen of Spades, Jack of Hearts, King of Clubs. What is happening there? Let me know in the comments below. Person, action, object. Let me know in the comments what this is. Please keep it clean, folks, or try to at least. For me, it's uh, Jennifer Connelly sailing on a golf club. And what if it was this? Uh, I'm not gonna say that one. <laughs> if you've seen the movie Requiem for a Dream, the last few scenes, you made me know That's what hilarious. Jennifer Connelly's doing. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, check out, uh, check out his channel. Nelson's got a ton of videos. Check out his book if you're interested in learning more about this stuff. And we'll see you on the next video. Peace. See you guys.